What's up YouTube and welcome. Welcome to yet another DIY vlog. Inside this DIY vlog, as you guys can see, I will be replacing my oil cooler for my Mazda CX-7 GT Turbo. All right, so this particular part itself, or the gasket should I say, mainly is known to go out around 80 to 100,000 miles. So when I got mine, it was sitting at 118,000 miles, a little bit, well, a little bit under 118,000 miles. Right now, it's a little bit above that. I only had it for a little bit over a month and already replacing the part on it that started leaking. Now, one thing about me, I'm always ahead of time, so I already was looking at YouTube videos and stuff like that for potential parts that can go out on the Mazda, and this was a part that I already was planning on replacing anyways in the a, in a near future, but it happened to go out on me at the time I wasn't planning on replacing it. So I brought the part off of eBay and it comes with everything that you need, the metal gasket that goes between the um, oil cooler and then the actual screw that screws the oil cooler down onto the uh, part. Now, all in all, it's not too much of a bad job, you know, especially if you got all the tools and everything that you need and you're pretty good with your hands. But I will say this, those of you that have been subscribed to me know that I've been working on my BMW as well. I got vlogs up about that. And I will say this, the Mazda is way harder than working on the BMW, like way harder. Like I was not expecting it. Even when it comes to changing out the uh, spark plugs and coils, I was looking at YouTube videos on that and it's way more, even though the BMW X3 is a six is a V6, still with those six cylinders, it's still way more, more easier and straightforward than the actual Mazda. It's just a little bit more to it. One of the main reasons why working on the Mazda is much harder than the BMW, uh, from my experience, is because everything is underneath. To change the oil filter and gasket and the housing and everything, I gotta go underneath the Mazda. On my BMW X3, I got a video up that I didn't release yet, replacing the gasket, the cooler gasket, on the BMW, and it's right there on top. Everything is on top, right there in your face. So not to worry about, you know, all the extra steps of lifting the car up, putting it on ramps or anything like that, and being on your back. So there's two ways you can go about taking this thing out. You can do it the way I did it, um, which is unscrewing all four bolts. And then after the four screws, undo the two hoses and then the um, wiring sensor. And then after that, the whole thing will come out. You already know how tough those wire, um, <clears throat> those hose clamps can be with pliers. So imagine being on your back and reaching up and stuff and your arms getting tired and stuff, trying to squeeze those clamps and slide those hoses off. You know, it's a pain in the ass when, it, when it's already on top of the car. So. Yeah, that's the reason why it's much harder. Or you may need a second person to hold the unit in place under the car while you come on top with an extender bar and a ratchet or whatever to uh, unscrew the bolt like that and get the uh, cooler housing off. Which I feel like both ways of doing it both have their challenges and they're both equally hard. You know, it's just all about what you feel like doing. So as you can see, it's kind of a bit of a task. You know, it's not super simple, but it's not too hard. Also a pre-tip before you start off everything, make sure you drain the coolant, which I didn't do, I forgot to do it. So when I pulled off the hose, the coolant started spilling out. Not not too crazy, I just really hurried up and put it back on there real fast and grabbed the bucket and then I let it spill out inside the bucket, you know, and I replaced it with some new coolant. And then also with the oil, you don't have to drain the oil from the pan, but it is good to go ahead and unscrew the uh, oil, oil, oil um, <laughs> you know, filter and everything and let it drain from the actual housing so you won't have to have, you know, extra oil, you know, mess and stuff everywhere when you do take the whole unit off of there. But I didn't, me personally, I didn't unscrew that. But yeah, last year was my first time working on vehicles for my first time ever. Never, you know, any any type of classes except for high school, a couple of year, a year or so. Um, but other than that, man, like, you know, it's my first time getting my hands dirty. I used to be intimidated. And the reason why I'm making this part right here is to get other people motivated. Because I used to always been, I always been good with my hands. I got a lot of hobbies, good at a lot of different things. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes to certain things, I just stay inside my lane. I just don't even try to even touch it. You know, even though I'm so talented, I don't even, I'm like, you know what? I just stay inside. I know when to stay in my lane when it comes to some things. And automotive, that's one of those things where I always stayed in my lane. I'm like, you know what? That's not my field. I ain't going to even try to make it pretend like it is. But I started realizing how a lot of these shops are full of shit and just little by little I started watching more and more car videos and stuff on YouTube just randomly they'll pop up and I just watch them and then little by little I started realizing that pretty much having all those skills and that type of mindset and that type of drive to you know like to fix things and, and fiddle, fiddle around with things that's perfect for being able to work on vehicles and stuff like that. This is just motivation right here to show you that hey I'm doing it boom you know continue doing what you do that way it's showing all these 
bullshit shops that they can no longer be ripping us off we know how to work on our own vehicles and stuff nowadays now you can no longer be charging these ridiculous stupid prices for a job that's super simple but you know to a regular person it looks like it's a whole bunch of complicated stuff when it's really not so with that being said don't be intimidated and if you're like me and you're new at working on vehicles and stuff like that especially if you got a Mazda maybe you want to consider subscribing because you know I'll be coming out with more, two more vehicles two more vehicles two more videos of you know my Mazda showing different cosmetic upgrades and stuff that I put on it and did to it and stuff and showing you know where I got it from and where I purchased it from and stuff like that normally I'm the type that don't like people to copy and you know I like to stand out and have my stuff be different but with that being said I noticed from certain videos especially some of my popular videos people are going to cop copy me anyways so I might as well go ahead and you know what I'm saying accept it for what it is you know can't beat them join them aka if life give you lemons make lemonade so as long as they clicking and watching I'm getting paid <laughs> So, with that being said, people of YouTube, thank you guys for watching this DIY vlog. We're looking out for more DIY vlogs coming at you guys soon. I got, I still got to finish some shoe painting, painting uh, projects I got. Um, I'm ordering more shoe paint. I got more, uh, you know, just different DIY. Y'all, you, you guys already know. Thank you, and I'm out. Peace. All right, man, it's a wrap. Finally done. Absolutely no leaks coming down. Everything is dry. I got a mess to clean up though. I cleaned that damn mess up. Cause this damn thing was loose a little bit. Other than that, it's a success, baby. I'm happy. Let's go.